welcome you so much to Awake Africa this Saturday morning again so that we can just share the word of God, encourage one another. Uh, for those ones who are joining right now, I would love you to uh, share this link with one or two friends, one or two families, so that they may be blessed together with us. So this particular morning is a nice morning. It's a hot morning here in Kisumu. And I bless the name of the Lord for he has given us yet another opportunity to be able to just hear from him and know what he has for us in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm glad that God has given us testimonies. Yesterday we had a very powerful Kesha at the BFTC with Beyond the Walls. And I know that God has blessed a lot of people and that the Lord has done great and mighty things for our country. The atmosphere has shifted to the glory of Jesus. So today we want to learn this morning and I know that God is going to bless you. I pray that you go with me from now until the end of this very broadcast so that you may come to get everything that the Lord has purposed and planned for all of us so that we can get and that we may be blessed together in the name of Jesus Christ. Genesis chapter 12 verse 1 to verse 3 the Bible says now the Lord had said to Abram get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. There are things that God has spoken into this verse when we read it like a verse that we have normally read each and every time without looking deeper into it, we miss some of the things. And I know we have learned this time and again, but allow the Holy Spirit to minister to you in a different way today in the mighty name of Jesus. So in this particular book, the Bible speaks, it is it is an instruction that is repeated. It's a follow-up instruction because the Bible says, Now the Lord had said to Abraham, the Lord had said to Abraham, this tells us that in the life of Abraham, this instruction had already been given. When we look in the book of Genesis chapter 11 towards the end, we see that who the person leading Abraham, the person leading Abraham is not Abraham himself, but the person leading is his father. Which means at the time of his calling, he allowed his father to take the lead. Many of the times we are given an opportunity, we are given a chance to lead. We are given an opportunity to raise a generation, given an opportunity for ministry. But we tend to think that we must go with the entire family. The entire family is okay, but depends with what covenant God wants to make with you. Depends with what journey God is sending you to. You, everybody shall pick up his cross and follow Jesus Christ. So Abraham had relegated his position as the leader for this particular journey, relegated it to his father who is an elder. And most people will relegate their opportunity, their chances, to elderly people so that these people will lead them thinking they have the wisdom. It is good. The elderly have a wisdom, but there is a journey that God calls you alone so that you can go alone. Think about Jesus. He was called for a particular journey. And when he took this journey, one time at 12 years, he got lost and his parents were looking for him. Then he told his mother and father, don't you know, didn't you know that I am in my father's house? Later, when he had begun his ministry, he is speaking and he is speaking to people. Then they say, your mother and your brothers are outside looking for you. Then he said, who are my brothers and who are, who is my mother? Who are my brothers apart from those who listen to me? He had separated his ministry from the associations which are cultural. So the Lord had spoken to Abraham and told him, get out of this land. But he did not do it alone. He left it with Sarah. He left it with the father. He left it with his father's house. But what is his? what was the instruction? The instruction was, get out of your country. He did that. Get out of your family. He did not do that, which means he could not go on. People died on the way. Lord's father died on the way. Terah died on the way, but Abraham remained. And God repeats this particular statement, this particular instruction to him. My question to you is, what journey has God given unto you and you have covered an entire society with you? 
what appointment has God given you and you have without discernment carried the entire family, extended family, your uncles, your aunt towards the same journey. And you find the journey becoming heavy. Why? Because you have been chosen, you have a pure heart. When Noah was given an assignment, he was given an assignment and he was not told that this assignment belongs to you and your entire family. He had to inspire his family to do, but he took the lead of building the ark and it was successful. So when God gives us an assignment, we have to move according to what God has said, following the instructions to the latter, taking the lead as it were. If he took the lead, maybe some of these people would not have died in the desert. Now here are the three things, here are the three things that God has asked Abraham to delink himself from. And these three things we're going to learn that we also in life today in the associations that we have, in our working places, in our ministries and in every place that we are, these are the places we need to delink ourselves from. He says, get out of your country. This is the land. This is where you have been, this is where you have been brought up. This is where you call your geographical location. We have people who are limited to a geographical location, yet God has called us everywhere. One of the preachers said, we all as believers who believed in Jesus Christ have been given an international ministry. For the Bible says, go ye into the world and make disciples of all nations. So all of us who are believers in Christ Jesus are not limited to a geographical location. Every time you limit yourself to a geographical location where you speak a certain language, where you follow a certain culture, these ones will limit you to move to the next level. They will limit you in the assignment that God has given unto you. There is always time, there is always place that God has called us to, and there is always people whom God has called, called us to. They may not be our own tribe, they may not be our own people, but moving with God will always bring success, for he makes a way where there seems to be no way. So we must not be afraid. He says, get out of your country, and today God is calling some of us, telling us, get out of your country. You are not limited to your village. You are not limited to your city. You are not limited to your race. God has called you worldwide to preach the gospel and make disciples. When I speak about preaching the gospel, I don't mean go and speak about the gospel. God has called you to live out the gospel, express the gospel to the entire world, making disciples corporately, making disciples ministry wise making disciples family wise so God has called us away from a geographical location where we are comfortable with our language where we are comfortable with our tribe where we are comfortable with our race God has called us into the world to make disciples of all nations Abraham is told get out of your country get out of your land where you are comfortable in get out of that place because it is limiting you let me come back and say this. You may work in your own land, but do not be captured within the jails, within the prisons of your land, within the prisons of your culture. When you're taken there, when you work in your own land and you're working, maybe you are coming from a particular tribe in this country. You're coming from a particular tribe in the country where you're coming from. It may not be Kenya, it may be Nigeria, South Africa, wherever you are watching from. But when you limit yourself to the culture of that world, the culture of that land, when you limit yourself to the language of that land, when you limit yourself to the ways of that land, then it becomes a limitation and a hindrance and a barrier to where God has called you to. God has called you to be a light. God has called you to show something better. Where there was darkness, show something better. Even when you're coming from the very, very same village, you can do something greater. You don't have to limit yourself to the culture. Yes, I see say we must be proud of where we are coming from. But I'm not saying let us limit ourselves to where we are coming from. And you tell yourself as Africans we cannot do this. You tell yourself as this particular tribe we don't do that. 
And you tell yourself, these people in our land, we cannot do that. Or we must do this and do that before something happens. Take an example of many African cultures where they will say, if you are a lastborn, you cannot build before your firstborn has built, before your firstborn brother or sibling has built. So that becomes a limit to many people. They cannot do anything because of the culture of the land. They have put themselves in the land even when they have gone to the United States or to the United kingdoms or to the Australias or the Asian countries, they are far away from their land, yet their village is still limiting them. Their village has become a mobile prison for them. But God is telling us, get out. That is spiritually. Get out of your land. Let it not limit you to do anything. Don't you wait for someone to wed before you wed. Don't you wait for someone to pay dowry before you pay. You are free in the kingdom of God and you need to follow the statutes of God, the commands of God, the prompts of God. For God is saying, get out of this place. I am leading you to something better. I'm leading you to a place that is better in the name of Jesus. Number two, he says, get out of your family. Now, when we look at family, family may be biological, family may be by association. We have people who have a family. It may be a political family. It may be a, a sports family. It may be a ministry family. It may be a family that is biological. But we are not supposed to allow the limits of our family. That is our belonging, where we belong. You know, family is where you belong. Land is where you have been brought up from. Country where you've been brought up. But family is where you particularly belong, maybe biologically or by association. Then Abraham is told, get out of your family. Get out of that place where you say you belong. We as believers belong to a better place. We belong with Jesus Christ. We are the family of God. The Bible says we have been given now the welfare of Israel. We can partake the welfare of Israel. We were here in this world without a God and without a hope. But now through Jesus Christ with his precious blood that was shed on the cross, we have been brought near to the father. There is no more wall of barrier. We are the family of God and therefore the family that we belong to is the family of God which is a kingdom higher than this kingdom system. It is a kingdom system that works differently from these other ones. So Abraham is told, get out of your family, get out of the comfort zone of your belonging. Uh, let me speak about churches. You may belong to a particular church. You're not supposed to limit yourself to the expectations of that particular church because you need to be open May that God is able to send you farther, that God is able to lift you higher. If the only person in your particular church has only a degree, it doesn't mean that everybody should stop at the degree level. If the only person that is highly educated in your particular ministry or church is someone who has a diploma or has, uh, or has an A-level certificate, it doesn't mean that every one of you has to be limited at that level because God will call us to something greater. He says as principle in the Bible that the former shall be greater than the latter. The end of days will be greater than the past. We are being lifted from one glory to another and you may be the person to break the glass ceiling. You may be the person that God is calling you in your particular church to break out of a particular kind of music to something better. God is calling you. God is saying, be open. I need you to belong to a family of God, a family where there is freedom, a family where you have the mind of Christ, a family where there's grace that is sufficient. Let us not limit ourselves to certain families. We have people who have limited themselves to families which are negative. Let's say crime families. You are limiting yourself to a crime family. You're limiting yourself and you're saying this particular gang is my family. This is where I belong. You belong to that family. It becomes a limitation that you cannot receive Christ. Because they have threatened you, you have taken a vow, you have, ta you, you have taken oaths to remain in that particular family. You need to get out of that family because it has limited you. It doesn't give you the ability and the capability to go worldwide. It limits you to that particular dark time. But when we get out of such a family, then this makes us and gives us the freedom to be able to listen from God because you're going to learn that later on when Abraham's eyes are open, then a promise is given unto him. Some of us has limited and especially this particular generation. 
We have a people who have limited themselves, have limited their emotions and their joy and their happiness to particular sports and maybe soccer, it may be rugby, it may be any kind of sports that you like. You may involve yourself with a sports club, you may involve yourself with one of the, of the uh, let me say we have Manchester United, you have Arsenal, you have all these ones and you limit your joy and your happiness to the celebration of that particular team. When they celebrate to celebrate when they don't celebrate you are sad and you are downcast. Don't limit yourself to any kind of family. God has called you to his kind of family. The kind of family on this earth has limitations but the kind of family that God is calling us to is a greater family in the mighty name of Jesus and we need to find that family. Whether it is your biological family, it will limit you. Get and arise to a better family, the God kind of family the family of God where we belong. Number one, God has said get out of your country. Number two get out of your family and number three get out of your father's house. Your father's house is where you have this kind of moral expectations that you've been given, some kinds of guideline according to your father's house. Eventually, you have to get out of your father's house. Where your father? Look at Abraham. He was told, get out of the land, get out of the family, get out of your father's house. And he made his father terror to be ahead of him, to be the head of the journey. He did not succeed. He failed and everybody died apart from Lot, him and the wife, Sarah. All the other people died in the desert because the father was leading a journey that he was not called to lead. And therefore God says, get out of your father's house. Many of us have remained in our father's house. And this is your domain. This is where, the, the, where, where you have been born, where you have been raised. The place where you, you say, this is, this is my blood. You see, this is where I belong. And some of them, like in Kenya, they say in Swahili, mimini tim flani damu, mimini damu, unona they don't bring glory to Jesus. God wants us to arise out of our father's house. Here, there are things that have been outlined for that particular family to follow. And when you follow your father's house, it is not bad to love our fathers and our mothers. It is not bad to be able to, to, to be obedient to our fathers and our mothers. But it should not be at the expense of what God has called you to. We have families that are so limited that no one can do anything. We have a family, families that are so limited that you cannot break out. There are fathers who have limited their children to certain norms of life you need to break out of from. When you break out of there, then God will lift you and take you to a higher place. Your father's house has instructions that have been given, but you must look at your father's house and their instruction, then look at God's family, God's house. God is now your father. When God is your father, he gives us instructions which are not limited, which there is liberty, instruction that he is able to provide the way any instruction given by the Lord is is the instruction that God will follow up to fulfill. But your father's house is limited. It cannot go further than that house. Your father's influence cannot go further than that house. So yes, we listen. We obey our parents in the Lord. We obey our parents in the Lord, but we should not be limited by your father's house. Most of you who are watching and maybe you may look back to your father's house and look at the level where God has brought you from. Then look at the level where, where you came from, where your father reached maybe he is alive or maybe God has gone to be with the Lord. But this is what you have to ask yourself. Had you limited yourself to your father's house, where would you be? Had you limited yourself to your father's expectation, where would you be? God is calling us out of the country, out of the, out of the family, and out of the father's house. Eventually, when marriage happens, it says, when marriage happens, say, a man and a woman, they both will leave their father and their mother and come together. When these people leave, they are not carrying the MOU from their father's house. They are bringing up a new culture, a culture of God, a God kind of culture that will uplift the people. This God kind of culture is the kind of culture that we all need in the mighty name of Jesus. So when we follow this, when we follow this, and you will find out that many people who enter into another covenant with a covenant of their father's house may not succeed. Many people will enter a marriage with a covenant in their father's house and they will not succeed.
Many women and many ladies, many wives for that matter, who listen too much to what their mother have to say will not listen to their husbands. It's just normal because you've carried a culture from your father's house to the next level. When you carry your father's house to your working place, you may not exceed and break through the barriers. You will be limited in the name of Jesus. But God says, get out of your country, get out of your family, get out of your father's land, her father's house to a land that I will show you. God is saying this, I am taking you to a different domain and this domain is the kingdom of God. This is domain is the kingdom of God, not to dominate over other people, but to have a domain where you have the say, where you can command, where you can speak, where you can enlarge, where you can bring the God kind of life on earth, where you can express the will of God which is in heaven on earth. God says, I'm bringing you to a domain that is limitless in the name of Jesus. Allow me to look through with you in some of the things that when we relate to bad company, when we relate to bad family, when we relate to bad lands and bad father's houses, these things will follow your life. The Bible clearly says that bad company will corrupt good morals. Every time you're having this bad company, they will corrupt good morals. God wants to take you to a land that you have not seen, which means God is calling us to walk by faith to something better. But most of the time it is very, very difficult. And when it becomes very, very difficult, we choose partnerships on earth. But when we choose them without discernment, then it causes problems to where God wants to take us. One, when we associated with the evil associations in life, we cannot move fast. It will be a luggage upon our lives. It will be a luggage upon our lives and we cannot move faster. Abraham and his father could not move fast because he carried the entire family. He carried the entire family and there's nothing that could happen. When we look at Samson and Delilah, he made a pact with Delilah and he could not fulfill his destiny. It was hampered, it was hindered because of the association that Samson had with Delilah. Not that God had not called Samson, but because God, not God, but the devil sometimes will appoint someone who will derail you. So we must be very discerning to know not just what we want, but we must be discerning so that we don't find Delilahs in our lives. The people who will hinder, who will make our journey difficult and the people who will shave our hair, who will remove us from grace, who will remove the grace of God from us. We need to be very discerning in every association and relationship that we are having. When you're seeing Abraham and Lot in Genesis 13, in the book of Genesis 13, it so happens that there is strife between the workers of Abraham and the workers of Lot. Now, now, when they are together, Abraham comes to Lot and Abraham says, uh, if there is strife between us, I do not need the strife. He takes the lower stance and he says this. He says, now, look, if you go to the right, I will go to the left. If you go to the left, I will go to the right. Then Lot looks to the land, uh, the land beyond the Jordan, and he says, this land is good as if it is watered by God. And because he is moving by sight, not by faith, he takes that land. But as much as far as he went with Lot, God did not appoint him to that land. He did not see the land. He was not able to see the land because of his association with Lot. So Lot chose his land. Then Abraham, in verse number 14, the Bible says, and the Lord said to Abraham, after Lot had separated from him. He said, lift your eyes now and look from the place where you are, northward, eastward, eastward, no, northward, southward, eastward, and westward. He said, all this place I have given unto you. The expanse of your blessings, the expanse of your sight, the expanse of the blessing and the land, the domain that God wants to give you is available. But as long as Lot becomes a covering upon your life, you may not be able to see. You are not able to see the expanse of your domain. Why? Because you are walking with Lot. Someone who covers you and casts a shadow of darkness upon your life. Someone who will always cause you to doubt. Someone who will always bring you strife. Someone who will always want the best. Because when he was given an opportunity to choose, he chose the best. He chose what looked best. But you may choose what looks best without God. It is not good. Because he pitched his tent next to Sodom and Gomorrah. Next to Sodom and Gomorrah and that place was bad. But this place in the desert, you may be in the desert but with God all is possible. You may be in a hard place but with God it is possible. You may choose second but with God it is possible. Better choose second but choose with God other than choosing first without God because that led him to another problem. So this company of Lord 
hampered, hindered, and become a barrier, become a darkness upon his life, upon Abraham's life that he was not able to see. There's another interesting story in the book of in the book of First Kings, chapter 13, and just allow me to paraphrase this because it is the whole chapter. There is a man of God from Judah who was sent by God and was given a specific instruction to the king. He went and he did the work that he was sent to do. But God had given him instruction and told him, please do not come back the way you had gone. Do not eat and do not drink. When he reached there, when he reached that particular place, he fulfilled what God had told him. He he did something that was supernatural. He was powerful at that particular point. In what he did, it was very powerful. Praise be to Jesus. For he had spoken to the king when the king's hand had withered. He spoke to him again and God stretched his hand. The altar of, of where they were giving their offerings, the sacrifices, was burst open. That is a great and a supernatural occurrence that happened through the man of God. But then the instruction is what is important. Do not move this side. Do not move through this way. Do not eat and do not drink. On his way, on his way, perhaps he got tired and sat down under the oak tree. Then another man of God who is an elderly man of God, and this is very important, an elderly man of God came and told him, please come to my house so that you may rest, so that you may eat, so that you may drink. And he gave the instruction, I am not supposed to go through the same way. I am not supposed to eat. I am not supposed to drink because the Lord had said. But the man of God said, the older man of God said, I too am a man of God. And the Lord has told me, he lied to him, the Lord has told me, the Lord has told me that it is okay for you to eat, to drink, and even to rest. Then the Bible records clearly that this man was lying. This is why I'm calling that we may be very discerning. Sometimes we have elderly people in our communities. The thing I am asking is, this man went to the king and was able to defy the king. So many of us are able, it is possible for us to defy the king. It is possible for us to stand firm when it comes to politics. It's very possible for us to stand firm when it comes to the president. But when it comes to other men of God, other men and women of God, whom we think, whom we deem more and anointed than us. When they give us instructions, we follow them. This is not the right way. Who is greater? Is it the man of God or is it God? He said, I too am a prophet like you. So do this because the Lord had told me what a prophet, what a man of God, a child and a daughter of God needs to move in is what we call discernment, especially in this particular age and time. Let us be very discerning because after he had gone there, the man of God, the one who God did not speak to, remember he lives in that land, God wanted someone in that land to speak to the king of that land but had to bring another man of God from another country. Yet the older man of God was here and God did not speak to him. So some of these people, God is not speaking to them. Just like Eli. Eli was there, but God did not call out Eli to speak to Samuel. He spoke to Samuel direct. I am ministering to you and I'm saying this. God wants to speak to you directly. God wants to give you instructions. And these instructions that God is giving you, he's saying, follow it to the latter. Do not compromise the, the, the instructions that God has given you. If he told you to wait for something, it shall surely come to pass. When he told you to wait for it, it shall cruelly come to pass because he is the one who has given the instruction. He has the power, the capability to make a way for that particular instruction in the mighty name of Jesus. So the Bible continues to say that this man of God, after he had eaten, then the Lord spoke to the man of God whom God was silent to, spoke to him and said, now that you have done this, the Lord says you will surely die. Then this man leaves the house and surely the lion comes and kills the man doesn't eat the man, doesn't eat the donkey, which means the lion was not hungry. It was just a punishment from God. So maybe some of us are going through some sort of punishment because we didn't follow the instructions of God. We rather follow the instructions of man. We follow the instructions of the people we deemed higher than us. There is an instruction that God has given you. It is more prominent. It's more pronounced. Yes, we honor the man of God. I honor the man of God who speak to my life. But I honor God more because he who speaks through them also gives us the spirit of discerning in case someone wants to lie to you. So do not be lied to. God speaks to his people and he wants to speak to you directly to give you an instructions. Bad company corrupts good morals. Whether it is in church, whether it is in family, whether it is in government, bad company corrupts good morals. Let me say this. 
company. Human company that is not instructed by God will always corrupt your spiritual self. Human company that is not instructed by God will always bring a hindrance to your life. Human company that is not instructed by God will always be a hindrance to your future, to your destiny in the name of Jesus. But now the second question that I wanted us to answer before we pray is this. How do we now associate with the people in the world? Our association, association with those ones who are not born again in Always, when we associate with them throughout the Bible, we take the upper hand. Why do we take the upper hand? Because we hear what God speaks. Because we have the answer to their problems. Because we are the sons and daughters of God. They are the wailing. They are the ones waiting for the answer. And we have the answer. When we speak about government, when we speak about government, we are higher than the government. We are higher than the government because we are hearing from God. Then our association, in our association to the unsaved, we take the upper hand. We don't walk into a brothel and become part of the brothel. We walk into the brothel and come out with people who are born again. We walk into bars and we come out with people who are born again. We go into the marketplace and we come out with them. Jesus associated with sinners but never became a sinner but rather he associated with someone for example someone like Zacchaeus and he transformed his life. When we get into an association with those people in the world if it is time by the instruction of God, we will transform their lives and they will desire something better. So our association will take something higher. Let me give us one verse that will clearly illustrate this in the book of Zechariah chapter 8 and verse 23. There are many verses we can illustrate. We have verses about Jacob who was being blessed and Jacob and Laban says, I am blessed because he is with me. When you read Genesis chapter 13 verse 27 and Laban said to him, please stay. I have found favor in your eyes for I uh, if I have found favor in your eyes for I have learned by experience that the Lord has blessed me for your sake the Lord blesses where we are working Praise be to Jesus. The Lord is blessing where you are working, not because of where you are, but because of who you are and whom you carry. That is what God blesses. And he said to him, name your wages and I will give it. Brother and sister, don't limit yourself to that company. Don't limit yourself to that particular company because you're higher. When you listen and when you hear from God, God will give you an upper hand. Listen to Zechariah chapter 8 and verse 23. Thus says the Lord of hosts, in those days, ten men from every language of the nations shall grasp the sleeve of a Jewish man saying, let us go with you for we have heard that God is with you. When people know that God is with you, they will always want to follow you and to find out how you succeed, how you do the things you do, how you are able to succeed the way you succeed, how you are able to operate in favor. Brother and sister, operate in favor. Son and daughter of God, operate in favor so that the world may see and fear, so the world may see and honor God. Do not operate like the world. They say that 10 men will grasp one Jew and tell them, let us go because I know that your church is great. Let your neighbors grasp your sleeve and say, let us go with you for we discern, we have experienced there is something different about your life. There is something different about your life that God wants to lift in the mighty name of Jesus. When God does this, now he wants to bless us because in the blessing of Abraham, get out of your land, get out of your father's house, get out of your family. God wants to bless him for he says, in verse number two, I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great and you shall be a blessing. Hallelujah. God wants to make you a blessing, the bearer of blessing, the bearer of favor, the bearer of favor even in that family. Now that you are with God, when you stay with your family, they will realize there is something better. There are things that will happen in that particular place that are because of you. When God and Abraham Abraham is is talking to God about Sodom and Gomorrah, God says, if I would find a few men in Sodom and Gomorrah, I will spare it. There are few men, a remnant that are in a city, a remnant in a place. These are the people that God wants to, God can save a city because of a few remnant. Remain with God. Remain with God in the name of Jesus Christ. Verse 3, Genesis chapter 12. The Bible says, I will bless those who bless you. I will curse him who curses you. 
and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So God says, I will make you a great nation. I will bless you. But then through you, just like Laban was blessed by Jacob, just like Pharaoh was blessed by, uh, uh, was blessed by Joseph, just like many people were blessed because by the virtue that the men of God were there, just like the sheep was spared because Paul was inside the sheep, the Lord will spare. The Lord will make you the light. The Lord will make you, the Lord can spare a city, a family because of you. So stand firm in the Lord and know that you have the favor of God in the mighty name of Jesus. May you be a great nation. Allow God to make you a great name. It may not seem like so now, but God wants to make you a great nation. God wants to give you a name. God wants to give you fame. Not that people will announce you, but so that people may fear God. The fame that God is giving us, the name that God is giving us is for the glory and honor of his name. May you be a blessing to many, many more families in the earth, on, in the world. May you be a blessing to many, many families around you because you have the favor of the Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. We have a divine association because the Bible says we are co-workers with Jesus. Our association is Jesus. The Bible says we are seated with him in the high places. We are not with this world. We are not with the politics. We are not with the people. We are not with the land. We are high above because we accepted Jesus Christ. We have a higher association, a divine association. And in a divine association, we are given the sight to see like God can see because the Holy Spirit it will show us, will make us and cause us to see what will happen tomorrow. In this particular association, there is abundance of grace. The abundance of grace that is able to save, able to supply, able to protect and able to lift. This is the grace of God that God has poured uh, abundantly upon, upon those ones who have become his family. We have a divine association and therefore our minds are discerning. Whether they come glittering and they are not God, we will reject them. We would rather take something that God has told us to take other than taking the glittering one which does not come with God. So we must discern. Discernment is not for the world alone. Discern even in the church. Discern wherever you are. Discern so that you may live a better life. Brother and sister, you have a great association. This association will give you a name. This great association will cause you to prosper. This greater, this divine association that you have will give you grace. And allow me to pray with you in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for those people who have watched and have listened to oh God. May you bless their lives so far. May you delink them. May you detach them from every evil association. Surround them, O oh God, that they may not be associated with people that will drag them behind. That they may not be associated with companies that will pull them down. That they may not be associated with the lots of this life that will cover the glory of God, that will cover them. May they not be associated with the things of this world that will derail and cause them not to move fast, O oh Father. And Lord God, those who delink themselves, so Father, those who detach themselves, Father, I pray that their feet will be as fast as a deer. They will be able to see, O King of Glory. They will be able to know, O God, what to move in, O Father. That, Lord, you will start lifting them, you will prosper them, you will uh, you will bless their lives, O God. You will surround their life with riches and glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I thank you and I bless your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed with thanksgiving. And thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you so much for sharing this particular link to people that will also be blessed. And next time on Saturday, we are going to learn about something else that God is putting in our heart. For this time, I want to say thank you so much.